What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the new Alpha Strike series by Nerf. This is a super, super budget series. All of these blasters are ridiculously cheap. Let's get into the review. So the Alpha Strike series is brand new. Hasbro sent me everything that I'm about to review. I didn't spend any of my own money on these products. Uh, thank you, Hasbro, for sending them to me. And I'm so excited to review these products because recently Nerf blasters have becoming are becoming way more expensive. Like the Nemesis is $100. The Prometheus is $200. Sure, you can buy it for $160 on Amazon, but the MSRP is $200 US dollars. So a lot of you guys comment on my review video saying I like the blaster, but I can't spend that much money on it. This budget line is super inexpensive. This Jolt reskin is $299. I've never seen anything with the Nerf logo sell for less than $3. I didn't actually, but I thought it was a typo when they sent me this price. But no, they're for realsies, $2.99. $3 for a Jolt reskin. I believe this whole series is supposed to compete with uh, off-brand Nerf blasters. Their biggest selling point was their price. Like the Dart Zone blasters have a lot of blasters that look a lot like these ones. But of course, when you buy a Dart Zone blaster, it's not a Nerf blaster, so it doesn't feel quite as nice. This is a budget line, so these blasters are a little cheaper in feel. But it's a pretty cool series. I'll review the blasters one by one right after the unboxing montage. It's important to note I'm reviewing four individual blasters, but you can buy them in different packs, in one pack, four pack, eight packs, and combo packs, including multiple blasters. I'm not reviewing every single pack, I'm reviewing the four core blasters and the little targeting cans. So individual blaster overview, starting out with a Jolt, or the Stinger. This is effectively a Jolt. It's the same thing as a Jolt. I mean, come on. This is the Stinger, this is the Jolt. It's effectively a Jolt, but it's $2.99. The Jolt retails for like $6.99 or $7.99. So this pistol's called the Stinger. It's a single shot spring blaster, uh, it operates just like a jolt. It has a single barrel, which is super easy to load. And by the way, these are included with all of the blasters and quite a few darts are included. Like this little jolt came with eight darts. Nerf doesn't typically do that. And I ripped a few of these things up and they look to me exactly like Nerf Elite darts. I'm getting the same chrono averages out of these uh, yellow darts as the blue Elite darts. So I don't think they're including cheaper darts. They are Nerf Elite darts. However, Nerf Elite darts still suck pretty hard. So if you want to hit stuff, get Waffle Head darts or AccuStrike if you have to have the Nerf logo. So you front load just like a jolt. You pull down the T-style priming handle just like a jolt. Then you pull the trigger, just like a jolt. It, it's a jolt, effectively. <laughs> but it's called the Stinger, which is a pretty snazzy name. And the Stinger individual pack is retails for $2.99, $2.99, $3 for a Nerf blaster with the Nerf logo on it. <laughs> that's unheard of, man. And the jolt comes with like two or three darts. This comes with eight darts. If that's like a big deal for you, that could be a selling point. For three bucks, that's an awesome deal. There will always be a place in my heart for the Jolt, so I don't think it's gonna be a direct replacement of the Jolt. It's still a cheaper version and it doesn't have a trigger guard. So when I was trying to shoot the Stinger much faster, my middle finger would ride up on the trigger and actually depress the trigger. So when I tried to prime it, I couldn't because the trigger was pulled. And obviously the catch won't catch if your trigger release is pulled. The advantage of the Jolt is the trigger guard stops your, your middle finger from sliding into the trigger. Is it worth double the MSRP? I don't know, that's totally your call. But that's the Stinger. It's so easy, it's just like a Jolt. So bam, done. <coughs> Yeah. Hasbro also sent me the four pack of the Stinger, which is $9.99 or $10 for four Stinger blasters and eight darts with the Nerf name. My mind is still like being blown, like as I'm presenting this. Budget Nerf, what's the point of off-brand? If they, if they quarter the low market, they have everything. <laughs> So that is the Stinger Blaster. That's the single shot Jolt reskin. The next blaster is the Fang, which is another cool name. The Fang is a spring powered front loader that has four barrels up front. That's a smart AR, so it fires from top down, but one at a time, it's not a shotgun. Really no external features to point out with this or the other blasters. There are no in-strike tactical rails on any of these blasters, no on-blaster ammo storage, and absolutely nothing extra. It's just a bare bones shooter, and that's why they're so cheap. So no in-strike tactical rail. There aren't even iron sights, but of course with a Nerf gun, it's not a big deal. To prime this one, you pull back on the T-style priming handle like that. Smooth prime, pretty lightweight. The grip is small, but it's pretty comfortable and it's extremely lightweight. All of these blasters are ridiculously light. The plastic they're using feels weaker. It feels lighter and thinner. It, it warps a little bit more. The quality difference is really noticeable when you directly compare the Stinger to the Jolt or the Fang to the Quadrot, which I recently reviewed. This is a very similar platform with the same priming handle. I mean, it's almost the same blaster, but the Quadrot is like significantly heavier and it feels sturdier. The grip is thicker. It just feels a little more solid, more like a Nerf gun. This is leaning towards off-brand quality, but that's what they're shooting for because this retails for $4.99. The Quadrot's MSRP is double that at $9.99 or about $10. And if you buy the Fang as the individual pack, you get the blaster and 10 darts for $5, $4.99. 
that's ridiculously cheap. I'm just waiting to wake up and then it'll be like, of course Nerf's not gonna sell blasters that cheap. That was all a dream, Franklin, you dumb idiot. <laughs> but no, I'm like 95% sure this is real. <laughs> I'm not crazy, I promise. A little bit. <laughs> no other external features to go over. These blasters are very, very minimal. No extra gizmos. But it's pretty comfortable and it's very lightweight. So even if it were super uncomfortable, it's not like a ton of weight that's leaning into your hand in a fun way. So that is the Fang Blaster. Hasbro sent me the individual pack and the combo pack, which includes two blasters, four target halves, which are these little bottle looking things. That's two blasters, four target halves, and 12 darts for $10. That is super, super cheap. And I'll go over these little target things after my firing demo. So that is the Fang Blaster. You like these clear stands? They're painted clear, so you can't even see them. It's like Wingardium Leviosa. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. The next blaster is the Cobra, which is another super cool name. Stinger, Fang, Cobra. I don't know the name of that one, but it's probably something cool. The Cobra is a spring-powered T-style priming handle, six round revolver. Similar in a way to a strong arm, if you need a comparison. The handle is styled in the same way as the Cobra in this blaster. It, it looks like it's designed to go fast, like a speed hole, like it's super lightweight and thin. And the blaster is noticeably light, even with the rotation mech. I'm not really sure how they pulled that off. But to prime, you pull back on the T-style priming handle, like that, prime works pretty well. And the cylinder revolves on the prime, so you have a very smooth trigger pull, unlike the Maverick, which a lot of people hated. Because you had to like halfway pull to align the cylinder and people screwed it up all the time and thought they, the blaster was broken when they just didn't know how to shoot it. This is just easier, probably shouldn't have mentioned the Maverick. I'm in one of those moods today. Purchased individually, you can get the blaster for these target halves and 12 darts for $10, which isn't quite as cheap as these other blasters because the strong arm is about $10 and I don't think anybody's actually gonna use these anyways. But it's still a fun blaster and I think the best addition to this over the strong arm is the T style priming handle for people that really dig that. I don't have any issues with the strong arm priming handle or the disruptor priming handle, but the T style is, some people like it, particularly modders, because it's easy to pull back a gigantic load on the T handle. That sounded weird. And once again, no gizmos, no in-strike tactical rails, not much else to go over. Uh, this blaster doesn't even have screws. None of these blasters do. They are snapped together. And I think that's part of the reason they're so cheap. The Hasbro engineers must have had a lot of fun designing these things to be as cheap as possible. Because if you don't have to pay for screws, you don't have to pay for somebody to screw them in or a machine to do it. They can just bring those costs really, really low for $2.99. <laughs> that's awesome. But it's just kind of funny to see a Nerf blaster that looks more like an off-brand blaster because it kind of is, but not really, because it has the Nerf logo. For some people, that's all that matters. <laughs> but the Cobra's overall ergonomics are pretty solid. The grip is a little weird, and it's not really my favorite, but it works, especially considering how light the blaster is. It, it feels comfortable, but not much else to cover because it's a super simple blaster. That is the Cobra. And the last blaster, which I don't know the name of because it came in a mission op set with multiple blasters, but it's kind of garbage anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Spoiler. This blaster is also spring powered, but it has a pump action style priming grip like that. And over here, it's a front loading barrel, even though it kind of looks like a shotgun. But the sample unit I was sent is totally defective. It shoots like garbage. Even the first barrel like doesn't shoot that hard, but then the second barrel almost never fires. So it's a two shot spring blaster with a smart air restrictor, but my air restrictor is super finicky. So the second shot very often just barely farts out of the barrel. And this is caused by the second valve either not opening all the way or the first valve staying open and allowing air to escape out of the top barrel. I'm not sure which. Even if it worked perfectly, Perfectly. It's really kind of a weird blaster. It's a two-shot blaster that's gigantic. This is more firepower, it's cheaper, and it's way smaller. The whole Alpha Strike series is totally guided purely for the value, for the budget of nerfers, not somebody looking for the best of the best. So this kind of doesn't fit anywhere. But I think it's just to complete the line because no series is complete without a big blaster for the photos. It looks kind of better balanced. Now I'm getting into the marketing strategy, which is irrelevant for the review. <laughs> but the ergonomics of the blaster are very similar. The same themed handle with these like ridges is here. It's very lightweight and there are no visible screws on the outside. So this shell just snaps together. It's extremely lightweight. Lightweight not being like gotta go fast like a race car. It's like flimsy and feels cheap. It doesn't feel like a Nerf blaster. I would like if I was blind, I'd pick this up and say, no, no this isn't Nerf. It's an off-brand gun. Just like the others, no in-strike tactical rails or anything else to cover. It's a very simple blaster. You prime it like that, you front load, then it has a smart AR to fire one at a time. It has two barrels inside here. Spoiler, I don't recommend this one. All of these other blasters have a place in our hobby. This one, I don't understand at all. The mission ops set, which this blaster comes in, retails for $20 and comes with this blaster, one Cobra, two jolts or two stingers, two target halves, and 25 darts for 20 US dollars. So the value is not quite as awesome there, but it's a, like a whole set just in case you want to play with all of the Alpha Strike blasters. So that is the overview of this blaster, which I don't know the name of. That's the general overview of the products. Now let's see them fire. Shooting regular blue Nerf Elite darts for video visibility.
opportunities. Doesn't he count when it's a cylinder? <laughs> now shooting some waffle head darts. That is the operational demo of the blasters. I did not experience jams or malfunctions with the Stinger, the Fang, or the Cobra, but I did have quite a few hiccups with this blaster. The second barrel just often did not fire very well. It features a smart air restrictor, which is supposed to divert the air to the loaded barrel, but it doesn't work, so it's kind of a dumb air restrictor, <laughs> which often leads to the second dart just farting out of the barrel, hardly shooting, and being kind of a waste of a shot. But realistically, I don't think many people are gonna buy this one anyways, because it's so big and it's just a two-shot blaster. This has way more firepower, it's cheaper, and it looks cool. But hey, that's just me. You can make your own decisions. To the chrono results. First up, the Stinger achieved an average velocity of 54 feet per second, which is low for the standards of a primary, but for a Jolt reskin, that's pretty much normal. That's what we'd expect out of a Jolt or any normal Jolt reskin. Next, I chronoed the Fang, and I achieved an average velocity of 59 feet per second, which is a little low for the standards of a primary, but for a pistol, that's pretty standard. And to compare it to the Quadrot, the Quadrot got a 61 FPS average, so it's pretty much the same. Next, I chronoed the Cobra, and I achieved an average velocity of 72 feet per second, which is is in line with other primaries in the Elite series, so that shoots hard, way harder than the other pistols in this series. And lastly, I chronoed the two-shot shotgun blaster, and I could only get a chrono average out of the top barrel because the second one was not cooperating, but I only achieved an average velocity of 60 FPS with the top barrel only. If I incorporated the second barrel, it would be like 13, because most of the shots just didn't work at all. But 60 FPS is pretty low for a blaster of this size. This is kind of the primary realm. This isn't something you'd holster or run on a sling because it's not a real shotgun. So I can pretty reasonably whine at that FPS, because that's pretty low. These other blasters are pretty acceptable for their class. This is just not competing well in its class, or even their class, which is kind of saying something. Since one of the barrel's dead, you're pretty much getting the same thing. A single shot Springer, a single shot Springer. They shoot pretty much the same velocity. And that concludes the chrono results. To reiterate, I did not have any jams or malfunctions from any of the blasters except for this one, which is just pretty much garbage right out of the gate. All of these are spectacular though. Next, I'll go over these little targets, which are included with some of the combo packs. And again, you can buy all of these blasters in different packs, so I'm reviewing the actual blasters, but you can get them in different combinations from different retailers. But these little target things come in two halves and they have this like jagged edge up to the side, but then you can kind of push them together so that it's like a full on can if you want to shoot it. And when you do strike the target, it kind of blows up and it looks cooler than just a normal can. Other than that, not much to say. Paper cups are, are gonna be easier to use because balancing these and all of that is kind of frustrating. But they look cool, so they have that. That is the objective information I can provide on the new Alpha Strike Blasters, down to my personal opinion. Overall, I think it's awesome that Nerf is coming out with this new series to compete with the bottom feeders in our hobby. There's probably a nicer way to say that. In recent years, Nerf Blasters have been increasingly more expensive. They're really cool now. They have like circuit boards and ammo counters and select fire and all this really cool stuff, but that's more expensive. You have to spend a lot more to get into our hobby, which leads a lot of people to purchase off-brand blasters when they're in the toy store and they don't really know the difference and they're thinking, well, this looks the same and it's half the price, so obviously I'll buy this one. Enter the Alpha Strike series, so if you really like the Nerf logo, um, you can compete with those other off-brand blaster prices and their quality and their performance and all of that um, with the Nerf logo. Now, I'm super excited for the series, but I do want to be clear. I'm not saying these are exactly like every other Nerf blaster out there. The Quadrat is a great example to prove this. The Fang is a super awesome blaster, and for half the cost, you know, maybe you want to purchase this, but the Quadrat is still what I would prefer. But I do this for a living. I have pretty much every Nerf blaster that's been released in the last 10 years. So naturally, I gravitate towards super high quality. But if you're on a budget, you're in a very different mindset when you're at the toy store trying to, you know, fill out your arsenal. And I totally get that. This is a phenomenal performing blaster. These blasters, except this one, I might just take this down. <laughs> Now I can talk about everything in front of me. <laughs> These blasters work well, but the fit and finish is not really worthy of the classic Nerf name. That's why they have a whole Alpha Strike series, so you don't get confused when you purchase this one, so you don't think, oh, all Nerf blasters feel like this. They don't. They usually feel better. But I think it's great that their performance isn't drastically like nerfed, and it's the best use of that word ever. <laughs> so often in this world, you're motivated to buy the best thing because it performs truly better. The Quadrat doesn't perform a whole lot better than the Fang. The Jolt doesn't perform a whole lot better than the Stinger, but the quality and the fit and finish is a 
step above for sure. And you can feel that if you have them in your hands. It doesn't creak as much. The plastic literally feels thicker and like stronger, like a higher quality plastic. And this is snapped together. Like there are screw holes on like every Nerf gun ever. <laughs> this doesn't have screws. It was snapped together, which I think is hilarious. So I'm super stoked about the series, but for most of my viewers who are like hardcore Nerfers, I don't think many people will be gravitating towards these main blasters. But the 299 Jolt reskin, oh for sure, check it out. Especially the four pack for $10. Heck yeah, man. I don't think many of my viewers, like the hardcore Nerfers, are going to be buying these blasters unless you need to buy like 10 of them. If you're having a birthday party and you want to cheaply give everybody a Nerf gun, it's kind of expensive to get everybody a strong arm. But Stinger four packs, $5 a piece, that's pretty cheap. And most importantly, the performance isn't nerfed, so you're not going to get outgunned using these cheaper blasters. It feels cheaper, but it's not like you're going to lose because of it, which I think is so awesome. You can use cheaper stuff that doesn't feel awesome, but it still performs just as well. If they made the chrono velocities way lower, it might not be worth it. But they didn't nerf them. Well, they did nerf them, but they didn't. Oh, this is confusing. Nerf is a verb, nerf is a proper noun. What is happening? So overall, definitely positive vibes from the Alpha Strike series. I'd say under no circumstances would you buy this one, but the Jolt reskins are pretty epic. This is pretty solid and they're all pretty good value. And to restate for about the 20th time, the value is what makes these blasters valuable. They aren't offering anything new, any gizmos, any extra things. It's just incredible value that competes with other off-brand blasters. That's it for the product overview of the Alpha Strike series. If you're interested in purchasing any of these, I'll put buy link in, in the description box below. Keep in mind, there are exclusives for certain combos. They have exclusives to Target, Walmart, Meyer, and Ross four different exclusive retailers. So if you want like the dual pack, that might be exclusive to one retailer, but you can get the solo pack somewhere else. So if you're interested in a particular combo pack that I reviewed, just shop around before you buy. So that is my combo review of the Alpha Strike series. Thanks so much for watching, bros. As always, stay tactical.